joined LSAT Unplugged. I know I was like on edge about it, but I'm really glad I just ended up signing up because the study groups are super helpful. And I've been meeting, you know, people who are willing to study after workshops and even on Friday nights, which is great. Um, I think one of the, you know, hardest parts about studying for the LSAT is just feeling super lonely during this journey and like you don't have anybody to support you throughout the way, um, you know, aside from like your family supports, like support with the studies and like being able to ask the questions. Um, so yeah, it's coming along. Um, now I'm just starting to get back into it after the November exam. I think it was good that I took the mental health break. Um, so I found it a little bit more difficult to get, like to really dive back deep into it start last week. Um, but yeah, again, I'm feeling more motivated, which is great. <laughs> awesome. I'm really glad to hear that you're finding it helpful and taking advantage of so much in the course. What's going on for you at this point and how can I help? Um, so I can tell you a little bit about my journey so far if you want. So I started studying in August. It was kind of lightweight, but what made me relate to you the most was I worked with a private tutor right off the bat. Um, rather than like start the self-studying journey immediately. Um, for me, I was just like, I think I forget how to study <laughs> and I don't really know anything about the LSAT. So kind of diving deep into it on my own, I probably would just confuse myself and overwhelm myself right off the bat rather than work my way into that. <laughs> um, so working with the private tutor, he was fantastic for, you know, logic games. Um, obviously that's the most teachable and learnable section of the exam and it just kind of clicked in my brain immediately um, but when it came down to LR I it was, I just was not having it um, you know his methods just didn't work with me but also like looking back at it there was like a few instances that probably just shouldn't have happened um, like I got blindsided into taking a time section like week four of learning LR um, I was learning things like, like he would do, he would teach me type by type, which is fine. I mean, it makes sense, but, you know, say I'm learning, um, I don't know, weekend, weekend questions that day. I like, he'd be like, okay, this is how you answer a weekend question. Great. Like I'm fantastic. Like I'm just answering it. Like I'm just answering every single question with the same strategy and the same approach. Um, so when he blindsided me into the time section, I had never seen all of like the questions on the same page. And because I was just doing, you know, say 20 for 20 questions for homework of that specific type, I wouldn't even be reading the question stem because I'm like, okay, I'm just answering it the same exact way. There's no point in reading the question stem. So it was a blowout. My self-esteem completely crashed that day because I was not mentally ready to like be like you know the LSAT doesn't call you and says like hey wake up like your exam is today um so I really didn't appreciate that one and then it just kept happening week after week um to the point where I was like yeah I this is just a never-ending cycle of like me being upset and then me trying hard and then me just being upset and then trying hard and then being so I was just like I'm gonna do this on my own uh so October I kind of took it upon myself picked up my Kim book. Um, you know, I was kind of focusing on LR at that point. He was fine. It was, it was okay. I didn't really like go up much, you know, it didn't really hit home for me. My problem was by the time the exam came, I was really good with the content. I just did not have time to practice. So, and I was really burnt out. So yeah, wow. that was my journey. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing your journey there. I mean, there's so much I could say. So <laughs> yeah, there's so much there. One thing that stands out to me is the introduction of the timed section work mm -hmm. so early in the process. You went immediately from drilling abruptly to timed sections. Yeah. yeah. Like, I didn't even know what this was. I was like, what section are we even working on? And then, you know, you could tell he was getting really frustrated because... For instance, like I, I didn't know what negating was. I was like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, well, what's the well if you're only about? doing weekend questions, yeah, negating doesn't. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't just weekend. It was like every type by type, but like 
you know, weekend was obviously easier for me. Strengthen was easier for me. Um, there was like a couple of things, like paradox at that point. I was like, oh, okay, I kind of understand this. But like, I wasn't actually understanding the questions. Like I was just kind of winging it as they would say, you know, just hoping I'm getting the answer right and just moving or like moving along. And it would turn out that I actually got the answer right, but I couldn't sit there and tell you why I got the answer correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like, like for logic games, if I got something wrong, I would actually be able to be like, oh, like this is why I got it wrong. Like I completely understand why I got it wrong. And I know I would have to do this to make sure that I wouldn't be getting it wrong the next time. But like LR, no way. So I didn't, I haven't even looked at like, it came to the point where I hadn't even looked at RC by the time the exam came around. Cause I was like, oh, reading comprehension, you know, I'll be fine. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no one do that. Um, so now I'm just really trying to bring everything into LR together and kind of find my way through RC, but also really work on mastering logic games like there would be times in prep tests or prep test sections of logic games where, you know, I'd be getting like, I'd be doing very, very well. Um, but I would still average like minus five, minus six. And then there's some of them where I would, it would be a blowout and like, I'd have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so I'm really steering in on mastering that. So yeah, I was, Great. I have myself signed up for the January exam because one, the deadline was December 3rd, which was two days after my score came out. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to take it in January because I obviously want to do very well and it's already pretty late in the cycle. Um, so I'm kind of trying to be a little bit more realistic about my chances of getting into a top-notch school um, and whether or not you know I kind of want to quote-unquote settle for a mediocre school um, which I wouldn't even say mediocre school, law school is law school at the end of the day, but <laughs> depending on, you know, my ambitions and my lifelong career, just taking that into account and whether or not I'm willing to, you know, take an extra gap year and what that would mean for me. And yeah. Well, a couple of things come to mind. One is that with your time remaining, it sounds like you still want to do some work in all areas. And one area that you would benefit a lot from is just deepening and applying your review process more, going beyond question stem type in LR, let's say, and looking at the method of reasoning and the stimulus, really dissecting where your mistakes are coming from and looking not only at the, stim- the question stem, but also the method of reasoning in the stimulus. And for reading comprehension, analogously, the structure of the passage. So I'd encourage you to look at the workshops and deep dives in the course to go deeper on how to engage in that review process. Yeah. And honestly, the workshops were great. Like my first workshop was RC last Monday and right off the bat, they're like, all right, you have 20 minutes to do two passages, answer the questions. And I was like, whoa, okay. (laughs) We're going back into it real quick. But it was exciting because, you know, it wasn't like eight minutes and 45 seconds. It was like, okay, you got 10 minutes to do this. Know, really dive deep into it. It's okay if you don't finish all the way through, at least like we're about to do a whole dive deep. And like, you know, we started doing, you know, paragraph by paragraph and structures and meanings and why would this be placed and who's the author and all that good stuff, which was fun. And then, yeah. Sweet. I'm glad you got a taste of that. And as you do that more on your own as well, do completing passages on your own. You can always watch the recordings of previous classes covering those passages, or you can also request that we cover any that give you trouble in an upcoming class. So there's a lot that you can take advantage of there. I wanted to make sure that I also touched on what you said about the timeline issue, though, mm-hmm. about the January LSAT, the February LSAT delaying a cycle potentially, so having to quote unquote settle for a, a school that may not be your top choice. I don't think that's actually your position as we speak right now in mid-December. Yes, the January LSAT is not early, but it's also not late. And the February LSAT actually isn't really late either. I know that there's a lot of information out there about timelines. A lot of it's changed and shifted over time. So pre-COVID, yes, that might've been late. It's not really late anymore, actually. The The cycle has shifted so that January's smack in the middle, 
February is still in the middle as well. So you could take either one and still apply this cycle without any significant disadvantage, especially if you can get a couple points more by delaying from January to February, let's say. And if you want to wait a cycle, of course, that's perfectly fine. And all else being equal, it's better to apply at the beginning than in the middle. But there are also costs to waiting in terms of holding back your career and getting done with law school and moving on. So it's really up to you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm going to start actually like going as hard as I can with this LSAT journey again. Um, I think for me, I find it more difficult to like find the motivation to get up and like get going with my day and really organize, you know, what I should be doing, how I should be studying and what I should be focusing on, especially because I'm not just focusing on one section. I have three sections that I still need to tackle and master. Um, So it feels a little bit overwhelming, especially because I had kind of gone into full isolation mode in October. So like the thought of having to do that again is like, "Mm, I think I would rather wait. Um, But yeah, I mean, you're right. Like there's a lot of information out there about, you know, timelines and how late in the cycle it is, especially when you're talking to older mentors as well. Like they'll tell you, you know, you could still apply, but like the chances are kind of more of a 50-50 shot um, than it is giving you like more of a leeway or like a better um, a better chance in the beginning of a cycle. Now, even in the past five, 10 years, timelines have changed a lot. So definitely older yeah. mentors are in a completely different place. I mean, the world was very different back then in so many ways. I mean, you talk to lawyers who took the LSAT before it was in the current format. Before right. 1991. So there's all sorts of things out there. Make sure that whatever you're looking at is current. Yeah. I have a question for you, actually. Do you think that, um, you know, this online format of the LSAT will remain beyond June 2022? I do. I do. I without, so. a, without a doubt. I mean, LSAC has hinted that they would like to offer the option to take it in person. But I think that's going to only apply to a very small percentage of people who opt for that. I think the benefits of online, assuming that you have a quiet environment with a good internet connection, it's so much easier for students and for LSAC to offer logistically as well. So I do think it will stay long term. Well, that's good to know. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, that's like pretty much it. I've been trying to use your day to day study plan, um, which was great. Um, you know, I did like day one on Friday, but I ended up having a study group session with two other students from LSAT Unplugged. And we kind of went through like the game itself. And, you know, there was like a lot of light bulb moments between, you know, three, the three of us. Um, and yeah, but you know, it's been, it's been rough out here. Yeah. But I'm glad that you're taking advantage. You're connecting with others. You're building that community. And you're going full steam ahead as you dig into it. So yeah. I'm glad we connected. I'm glad you're on board here. And let me know if you need anything. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the work that you do for us students that are taking on the LSAT journey. Your videos are super informative. They're super engaging. And even just like the different LSAT you know, success stories have gotten me through so much, um, especially when I feel like I've hit a wall and a dead end. Um, but yeah, so thanks, Steve. Keep doing what you're doing. You're great. (laughs) Oh, thanks. That means a lot to me and I definitely will. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.